See Skeletor? Nothing up my sleeve. Here's your look at the Mattel Master Universe Origins, Orko, the heroic court magician. Orko may have unpredictable magic powers, but his loyalty and pure heart are never in doubt. Technically, Orko does include a display stand, so it will increase the height of the figure. But I think for the purpose of just simply measuring how big the figure stands, I'm going to leave the stand off for the time being. To see how tall Orko does in fact stand, I'm going to take the tape measure right to the very top of his orange hat. And we're going to stop it right there. He is going to be, of course, a little bit smaller than the rest of the Master's figures. Orko stands 4.1 inches in height. Switching that over to centimeters, the figure is 10.4 centimeters tall. Let's bring in a couple of Masters figures so you can see the difference in size with them and Orko. Bring in He-Man. We'll bring in also Man-at-Arms. Let's bring in Tila. And we'll bring in Many Faces. I always try my best to kind of mix these up every once in a while so it's not always the same figures coming in. But as you can clearly see, though, whatever figures I do bring in, Orko's about two-thirds their height. That, of course, will change when we incorporate the display stand that happens to come included with the figure as well. Let's check out the accessories to come included with Orko. Even though I wouldn't technically call it an accessory, he does come included with a mini comic. This comic has made already several rounds with these reviews, entitled Double Trouble. You can see held in both of He-Man's hands are Orcos, pluralizing. One is a regular Orko that we can clearly identify as a viewing audience, and then one looks a little more sinister. And yet He-Man holding the two is like, I can't tell the difference. Come on, He-Man. Could it not be that your eyes are as strong as the rest of your body? How would you not be able to identify the fact that this one has sneering eyes? Those are Visine eyes. Regular Orko wouldn't have that. And yet He-Man is absolutely perplexed by the whole situation. Spinning the situation around, you can see there on the back is all this wave. Now finishing up this wave, and let me actually just put this down and just do that for a second. Boy, I tell you, of all the waves that I've been collecting for the Masters of the Universe, picking up now the comic, this wave specifically was I found the most difficult to try to track down. Local stores here in Canada, <laughs> I just have to even stop for a second. I hold back my laughter when I say that local stores here in Canada had squat in the way of Masters figures. They may have had the odd occasional Stratos and Roboto, but if you already have picked up those figures, nobody's interested in Stratos and Roboto. Sorry to those two characters. But these ones were very difficult to pick up. Eventually, I was able to track down Trap Jaw and Many Faces with Orko and Scareglow still eluding this humbled reviewer. Eventually, I just said, oh, forget it. Just forget it. And I picked them up over on eBay. So I paid a little bit more for them. But I'm finally done. Now I can go to sleep. Finally. I will say, though, the inside of this comic being North American, it graces us with text. Your imagination may be better than mine. You may be worse than mine. But I will say text does certainly benefit those that would like to be able to read and be engaged in a story. If you leave that out, all you really have are com comic panels that you may not necessarily be able to piece together what exactly is going on here. You get the gist of it, for example. Like there's Scareglow. I understand. I can see Scareglow is up at the top corner. But text certainly does come rather in handy, especially the fact that He-Man just has, again, no idea that Visine Eyes Orko isn't just Skeletor in disguise. I mean, you can see right there, Skeletor's turning into Orko. Anyways, there's the comic. We'll put that to the side. I think I have now, what, I guess five of, four of those comics, four of those comics, because never picked up the He-Man and Skeletor. Let's move on over to the accessory de department of things. Orko comes in clue with a display stand. It's actually really beneficial the fact that he does come in clue with a stand because if not for that, poor Or Orko would just basically be scooting on the carpet like your cat or dog. You know, cats and dogs always do that. But Orko, it's nice to actually have him levitating and you wouldn't be able to really pull that off unless you had like some fishing line or something you could suspend him from a ceiling. So at least Mattel included a display stand. 
It's sort of this sort of this puffy cloud with glitter across it. It's all done in translucent plastic. I already took the time of installing the, the parts. This actually was a separate piece from this, the base. Once you force this in, it latches onto those little plastic ledges on the inside. So removing it again, I think what you would ultimately do is just break those little purple tap pieces. So I think it's a one and you're done sort of scenario. But I, again, I don't know why you'd want to take this off once you put this in place. I really would have only popped this off now just to show you how to install it. Sort of just redundant, I feel. It does have posability. It does have two knuckle joints there. One hinges here. And then one hinges here and it technically can rotate as well. It's a nice detailed display base. And I appreciate the fact that it does have some translucency to it. As you can see, I'm waving my hand behind it. Hello. Hello. And it does have that glitter speckled across the surface. It looks like something that would belong to Orco. In some ways, it also looks like it something that would belong to a My Little Pony. But I digress. Certainly when it comes to My Little Ponies, I digress. Anyways, you can take this. If you pick the figure up, just on the bottom here, there's a very subtly concealed hole. You just take this, take the plug, and fit this into the hole. Like that. And as you do it, you'll hear a nice satisfying snap. Orko then does have the ability to hinge forward. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And you can also, uh, well, you can rotate this way. And you can also hinge them, well, rotate this way. It doesn't really matter technically, because it's not like the cloud changes shape too much. And he does also have that hinge joint in the top there as well. So you could have it either just dead straight like this, which again, we just put the figure down here and bring in just a, just a He-Man. I say just a He-Man, like, you know, just some, you know, just some guy. Bring in He-Man so you can see. It looks a lot better, honestly, to have Orko levitating than having him just scooting across the carpet like a cat or a dog. Okay, bye He-Man. We're just going to move you out of the way. Sorry, I didn't want to promise you the rest of this review. Uh, the one thing I'm disappointed that the figure doesn't actually have, and I several times checked back to the packaging to see if there was something I may have missed. Was there something I may have missed? Did the figure come included also with a staff? I didn't see one. Normally, it would have been on the back of the figure's clamshell. So if the figure's sitting inside the tray, just imagine right now that my flesh hand is the plastic tray. Usually there's like a little baggie behind it that would hold the figure's accessories. Orko came with not that bag. He did came come in clue with this. So unfortunately, I think it was the case that they used the budget for the plastic to create the display stand. I asked myself, could we not have used the budget to get both things? But Orko sadly doesn't come in clue with a wand. I mean, come on. He has the hands. He's literally just teasing you by the fact he should be holding something. And sadly, he doesn't come included with a little wand. Again, unless I missed it, I checked back that packaging four, five times, unless it fell somewhere on the floor. That being the case, let's get a closer look at Orko now. I will say he's a rather cute little fellow. Looks fairly like his cartoon counterpart. He's a little bit wider in the torso. Cartoon Orko would be a little bit shorter and squatter. He looks much more like the vintage toy of Orko, although Orko is a lot longer of a toy. I never had that original one. I'm pretty happy with how this one turned out, short of one thing. It's his head. His head looks pretty good, painted for the most part all right. There's somewhat of a speckling of black around the yellow, and in some places, like the bottom of the yellow here, it looks a little on the unfinished side. But I'll take it. I'll take it. His ears, yeah, the little bit of the yellow has made its way onto the blue of his ears. I'll take that. But I find his head is a little on the small side. I mean, again, if you even if you just compare it to the comic, how does he not notice that Visine Eyes Orko isn't... He, he's been friends with this guy for, we would imagine, years, yet He-Man has no idea. Clueless He-Man. Anyways, though, if you look at the head sculpt, and I know I'm comparing an illustration to the figure, his head should be a lot bigger. I really get what they were trying to go with here because... Making his head smaller like this, it sits a lot easier inside his neck scarf. One unfortunate problem that also I have with this figure is because he does have neck articulation, or specifically he has a bulb peg that sits inside the socket of the head, they have to allot for enough clearance so you can actually move the head around. In certain circumstances, as you tilt the head up like this, you know, you'll see a very noticeable peg sticking inside the bottom of, of Orko's head. Now, why couldn't they have just used a black peg? I mean, it still would stand out like a sore thumb, 
but at least it would blend in better, I feel, to his head than using the same color of plastic that they use for the rest of the body. It's by moving his head like this, like this, like this, and like this, that you very much see that there's, yes, a peg plunged into the bottom of Orko's head. I wish they could. So I'm probably just going to display him like this. Anything past beyond that point, I guess I could move the head further down. That's not so bad. But tilting it back, that's when you start moving into peg country. Anyways, we'll talk more about his articulation in a second. Like I said, for the most part, the paint's pretty good on this. I think there are many elements of here that just are the molded plastic. Like, I think his hat here, colored in that orange tang, is more the molding of plastic. I don't think they actually had painted that. The part that they didn't, unfortunately, paint was the bottom of his ears. You can see right there. I know I already draw, draw, I drew, drew everyone's attention to that. His body is all that same fruit roll-up red plastic. He's also got the plastic in his hands. So there's very little paint really happening here on Orko. If anything, I would have said his ears. I would have said, his, obviously, his face. And the little ring in the middle O there. That's about the only things I would imagine that are painted on the figure. So yeah, he can walk away being a pretty clean-looking character. He doesn't have maybe some of the plaguing problems that Trapjaw had. Or even many faces being a lot of that part of the figure was painted. Orko, like I said, the plastic looks pretty clean on him. The articulation, what little he has, is actually pretty good on the figure as well. But again, the only thing that's disappointing about this figure, looking back several times, several times I might say, the figure didn't come included with a wand. And if it's going to be Orko, the figure's got to include a wand, and sadly they just left it out. Let's now together tackle Orko's articulation. There's not really much, because it's only really his head, his arms, and like the rest of his body is just molded plastic. So when it comes to his articulation, I know I've already discussed this. The head does rotate all the way around, being that it's sitting on that ball peg. You can move it up, down, and back and forth, but mileage will dictate just how far you reach that. Just because, again, you're going to see a big noticeable gap, and you're going to see that stem where the ball peg is sitting inside of Orko's head. Again, they really should have used black plastic, I feel, for that. So we're probably just going to keep it like this on display. As for his arms, though, his arms hinge out at a very easy to manage 90 degrees. You can also bring the arms forward. You can bring the arms back. He has a bend in the elbow, which allows the lower part of his sleeve to rotate back and forth. And as for his hands, they work the same way as the sleeve. You can rotate them all the way around, and there's a hinge joint right there that allows the hands to hinge back and forth. But that's it. That's all you're getting for Orko's articulation. I mean, really, what would I have expected from a guy who's literally just a cloud that floats around in the sky? Speaking of which, speaking of which, let's go ahead and grab the display stand again. Initially, I may have also commented that I didn't like the fact that the puff of smoke was purple. Because in the cartoon, and if I'm basing it only on the filmation cartoon, it's not like Orko had smoke underneath his body when he was scooting around. I go saying scoot again. Scooting around Eternia, but I get why they had to include it. They had to give him something to levitate. And maybe clear plastic isn't super interesting. Purple with a little bit of glitter is appropriate for My Little Ponies. And again, I think it's appropriate for Orko as well. And we'll just move him over once again and we'll bring in He-Man. Despite being best friends for like whatever, it seems like He-Man still couldn't identify Orko. Regular happy-go-lucky Orko to the evil, sneering, Visine Orko. But anyways, though, when it certainly comes to displaying them, I'll be most likely displaying Orko right next to his buddy, his pal, He-Man. And the, both the figures look really good on display when you have them displayed like this. Now, I don't know if it's a case where Orko was a single figure per pack situation or simply just the popularity of the character from the original Filmation cartoon caused the scarcity of this figure to happen, where... I just couldn't find him <laughs> for obvious reason. I couldn't find him in local stores. So I would have had to pick him up online. Smart people would have gone the routes of pre-ordering these figures long before they released. So at least when they were available, the stores or sites online would have shipped them directly to you. I waited. And unfortunately, this wave of all the other waves that we've looked at here on this channel, this particular wave has taken me the longest to complete because I've still been waiting for Scareglow and Orco. Ordered them from one site who had them in stock, only to find out that I got myself the many faces with a nice little letter telling me that the remaining figures that I pre-ordered or ordered because they had the stock available of them were all back-ordered. Yeah. 
So I ended up having to go to E-B-A-Y. Why? Because I had no other choice. I ended up having to pick up the Scarecrow and Orko. And yes, Orko was a more expensive figure. It probably was at least $10 more than the other Masters figures that I've picked up so far. But at least I can now finally say this wave is done. And you're not seeing it right now. But I'm, moving, I'm clapping my hands. Cleaning off. Dusting off my hands in the background here. You, you only just only heard it. But at least I finally have this set, and I finally now have Orko, and I'm really glad that I finally can have him on display along with He-Man and the rest of the Masters. He's not a bad-looking figure. He's lacking, though, a, a magic wand, and I don't know why I seem to have the stigma that this character has to have a wand. In many of the cases in the Filmation cartoon, and even as you can see here on the back of the packaging, Orko's just sort of wiggling his fingers. That's how he does magic. I don't know why I have this mindset that he has to have a wand. I know people are probably like, why did he... Why does he keep saying that he has to have a wand? I don't know why. I don't know why. I feel like Orko should have come with something that he could be held in his hand, something magic related. He comes at least with a mag magic display stand that has a magic purple color to it. Some people would not appreciate the fact that the, the plastic that they use for the display base is purple because again, like if you see him in the cartoon, he doesn't have a big puff of cloudy smoke underneath him that glitters and sparkles and shines. But at least they displayed it. They have them displayed with it in this case. And really, again, if they used clear plastic, I'd probably be looking at this thinking, you know, it it just needs a little bit of color. It just it, it just needs a little bit of something, something. The clear plastic just isn't delivering it. So, you know, for me, I'm on that list that I don't mind that his display stand is a glittery purple. It just, again, brings a little bit of color. You know, speaking of color, this Orco has notably one of the brightest color schemes, not only of the Masters of the Universe Origins figures that we've had a look at, but I think of all the other Orcos that have been released over time as well. They usually tend to go the more darker color on Orco. No, he's quite vibrantly bright here with a very bright tang colored hat. Orco's a nice looking figure. I just wish his head was a little bit bigger. And I wish that they could have used at least a black peg for his neck. So if you are moving his head about, you're not going to see this big noticeable stem underneath his head. His head really should have been a lot bigger. And I, I get, I get why they wanted to do this so that there was enough wiggle space that you could actually be able to tilt and move his head around. But it results in Orko's head being a little on the small side. And it does result in when you're moving the figure, you're going to, yeah, you're going to see. I, I know I just finished, I just finished saying that big, big stem all in bright orange, or that kind of bright red. What do you guys think of Orco? Let me know down below in the comments section. It's crazy, I know, that I'm suspecting, expecting that this guy should have included a, a wand. Okay, I'll just drop the matter. He wiggles his fingers to do the magic. Why did I feel he has to come included with a wand? That's just me. That's just me. If you guys are enjoying the content you're seeing here on this channel, thrilled finally for the fact that we're finishing up this wave, which seemed to take eons to finally complete. Make sure you hit this video with a like. If you are new to here, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below. And make sure as well you turn the bell notification on and keep those Eternian peepers of yours peeled because there will be more Masters of the Universe Origins reviews lined up and coming your way. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.